Hi, <clears throat> welcome to my video series on the Harn Master Rule System for Foundry Virtual Tabletop, or Foundry VTT as it's known. I've put links to Foundry VTT and the Harn Master Rule System in the description below. In this video, I'm going to go over a couple of tabs of the character sheet. I'll be going over gear and containers in a separate video because it is a big topic. Characters, or actors as they're called in Foundry, are found on the actor sidebar uh, in the uh, tab to the right of the screen. You open an actor sheet by clicking on it. Uh, the Hardmaster character sheet has multiple tabs. The first tab you'll encounter is the profile tab. This is where you enter in all of your physical attributes, e.g. strength, agility, and etc. Each attribute is split between its base value, uh, the value that you rolled when you rolled your character, uh, and uh, its effective value. Remember that a physical penalty impacts all physical attributes when they are tested. In this case, I've given the character a physical penalty of one in order to demonstrate how this works. If your GM tells you to roll a strength check, uh, you can click on the six-sided die right next to the strength attribute. Uh, or if it's a strength skill check that's needed, you click on the 20-sided die. Here we're making a still strength check to see if we can lift a particularly heavy rock. Uh, notice that you have the opportunity to apply any situational specific modifiers. You can't change the target number though. Uh, if you put in a non-zero number in the situational modifier, uh, it will appear uh, when you roll the dice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a one just to demonstrate. And you see here at the chat uh, side panel, we do have it uh, rolled. He had successful with it and it has a modifier of one. Uh, the next uh, aspect on the profile tab is sun sign. It is a text entry field uh, and not a drop down because of cusps. Uh, I think a drop down would still be a nice improvement. Uh, maybe that could be in version 1.01 .01 or something. Uh, next up is the description area. This is a rich text field uh, that you can edit. This is built in uh, Foundry tabletop functionality. Uh, anything that appears here will be shown to players who have only limited visibility. Uh, you'll notice the similarity to the friends, foes, and followers format from lithia.com. It is taken directly from there. Uh, limited visibility allows you to describe your NPCs the way that the players will see them without spilling the beans on all their stats. Uh, or if you are a player, you can describe yourself the way that other uh, players will see you. Uh, I'll be going over the different visibility levels in the GM uh, video, but until then, what you can see is this over here is what the limited visibility version of an actor looks like. So this is an NPC. He is taken from the Friends, Foes, and Followers uh, compendium, which is available. And you see, all I see is the is a uh, tall portrait, uh, the little token, his name, race, and then the Friends, Foes, and Followers kind of format. Going back to our test character here, the biography tab contains the portrait that is used in the limited visibility view, uh, as well as your character's life story. Uh, this is stuff that other people don't know. So if you uh, were an orphan or you know things that aren't immediately physically obvious, you type them in here, uh, uh, lorem ipsum, and then you save it with this button right there. And so there he is. The next big tab to cover is skills. Here are all your character's skills. Uh, you see here that you start your character with all of the default skills, the automatic attributes. Uh, each of these skills has in it, if you click on edit, the skill base formula. It's already built in and it is calculated for you. Uh, it prompts you with the formula. So if you want to make your own skill, uh, you know how to do that skill-based formula. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, well, let's, let's start first with adding in additional skills that are part of the uh, base rules. 
If you want to add in a skill that's not one of the automatic skills, you go to the Compendium tab in Foundry. Uh, here you can see, well, so here's the friends, foes, and followers. Uh, but here you see the standard skills. Uh, so standard skills for combat, communication, crafts, and lore. Uh, we're going to give this guy astrology. You just drag it and you drop it. And it's you see here that it's already calculated the skill base. So let's go ahead and open this at 22. You hit enter and that closes that. Or you can press close up here. So we have all the all the standard skills that are part of the standard rule book. Uh, if you want to add in a skill that is not in the standard rule book, you can click here, add, and you can add in a new physical skill. And we'll call this one, um, uh, I don't know, um, uh, long jump. All right, to de de differentiate with uh, jumping. And you can put in your own skill-based formula, uh, which is going to be strength, and it will be uh, uh, agility, and it will be uh, willpower. And there you go. It calculates the skill-based for you. We're going to open this up at 26. Boom. I now have my own skill. Uh, you do need to put your own icon on there. There are, I believe, over 300 icons included with the system. Uh, one skill that is in the physical skills that I want to highlight in here is condition. If you drag and drop condition in, this condition is, as you know, a optional skill in the rule book. If you put in the condition skill here, uh, and we'll open this up at 70, uh, then if you, if you have an actor with the condition skill, condition will be used in place of endurance when doing things like shock rolls. So that is really important for you to be aware of. Uh, that condition, having that skill impacts how the rest of the game works. You also want to be aware that if uh, you can actually have two actors, one who has condition and one who doesn't, and they're essentially playing with two different sets of rules. Uh, you as a game master need to be uh, particular about that. If, you, if, if you're doing the condition skill, you need to make sure that all of your uh, actors and, and uh, all of your PCs, all of your NPCs have condition in there. All right. Uh, what if you as the GM have a house rule skill that you want to make sure that everyone can uh, easily use? Uh, you can actually make your own skill and you can put it in the items here. Here I've made a house rule skill for martial arts, which I will just drag and drop in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 28. Uh, you see that we've got the uh, skill based formula, which includes sun signs. Uh, I'll open that up at 28. So once you start getting a lot of skills in here, it starts to be difficult to find exactly that skill that you're looking for. So you'll notice I dragged and dropped it on here, but I don't see it right now. Well, now let's go ahead and find that skill quickly. You just go up here into the filter skills by name and start typing in the, uh, the skill name, uh, martial arts. There it is, M-A-R. Uh, it filtered out all the skills that don't match that. And if I want to now do a skill test against it, uh, so you'll notice here I typed it in at 28, but because of my physical penalty, it's already calculated my EML is 23. So I want to make this skill test I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click on martial arts, and again, it didn't work. Uh, martial arts, I'm just going to click on it. There we go, pops up, and I'm going to roll a 23. Hey, I actually had a marginal success. So that is it for the skills, the profile, the bio biography. Uh, I will be covering the other tabs in later videos, and I hope that this video was helpful for you. Thank you.